one. Non rock a boatus must stop. I don't want to rock the boat. I want to sink it. Are you going to bark all day, little doggy? Or are you going to bite? Right. Delusional. Yeah, I love you, delusional. Yeah. Delusional is okay in your worldview. I'm an animal. You don't chastise chickens for being delusional. You don't chastise pigs for being delusional. So you calling me delusional using your worldview is perfectly okay. It doesn't really hurt. <laughs> she hung up on me. Yeah! Oh my God. What? What? Desperate times call for faithful men and not for careful men. The careful men come later and write the biographies of the faithful men, lauding them for their courage. Go into all the world and make disciples. Not go into the world and make buddies. Not to make brosives. Right. Don't go into the world and make homies. Right. Disciples. Well, I, yeah. got, I got a bit of a jiggle neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, Pastor. No. When we have the real message of truth, we cannot let somebody say they're speaking truth when yeah. they're not. First Corinthians sixteen thirteen. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. And then verse 14, let all you do be done in love. What is up, everyone? I'm very excited for the show today. This is Luke the Bear sitting in the captain's chair today. Pastor Jeff is on his mandatory sabbatical. So it's just Joy and I today running this thing and we are very his mandatory sabbatical from last year yeah exactly if you want to know how busy pastors yeah, are yeah that's true he had to keep <laughs> postponing it uh but well, it was kind of a weird year too it was I guess. yeah that's an understatement <laughs> so i'm very excited about today uh to my left is my favorite joy the girl hello i'm very excited about the show me too it what seems like what's this rock and roll music it seems like a people are going to start us like if it's just ever the two of us on the show wasn't the last show we it was did music, yeah. together it was music yeah. one two of them yeah yeah i think every time and we're having darren on again next week so right yeah so every time jeff's out here we talk about music which is fun and, and it's i think it's good uh it's therapeutic right we're always like so like dead serious about everything it's like <laughs> oh let's have some fun today <laughs> Um, so yeah, so uh, if, you, if you don't know what's going on today, we have John Cooper on, the lead singer from Skillet, and uh, I'm going to bring him on here in a second. I'm playing uh, the first track from their from their first release, uh, and I'm very excited about this. My wife actually really wanted to be on today, and, uh, oh. and she never wants to be on, but I was like, oh, sorry. Why yeah. didn't she? No, she, uh, she's doing something today with her sister. So, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyways... Uh, I um, I just looked up John because yes. we were, you know, going to have him on, and I was like, yeah. "All right, let's just see what there is to know." And he's not the only John Cooper out there because one of uh, the I clicked on something and it was like, "John Cooper is seventy five years old and still in prison," <laughs> and I was like, "I think that's probably the wrong one." <laughs> probably, unless he's making music from prison. Um, so. I'm gonna go, John. I'll have. I'm you glad. To, I'm glad to have him. The oh, actual the, John. Cooper the one on. we want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not the actual. Just the one we want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will say that this John probably has the best beard that's ever been on this. Program. I know. One of the first uh, YouTube comments was, "Are we getting any beard grooming tips?" Possibly. Uh, John actually has his own uh, brand, not brand, but line of beard oil and stuff. Oh, very nice. Which Pastor James gave us all. Uh, for Christmas, oh, a little okay. bottle of the oil, so that's why your beard's quite well. looking lustrous yes. today. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, John, what's up, brother? How's it going, man? Good, man. I, so, I hear you playing that old loud oh, yeah. skillet rock music. I feel like that could take down the walls of Jericho. Yes. I, 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 serious, that guitar could take it down. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I, 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 have some, I have some stories I want to tell you about this album, but... Um, it's funny because when I told my wife we were going to have you on, I, I uh, played this album. It's been a while since I listened to it. And I was like, man, this is still like a solid album. You know, it's, what, 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 what year did you release it? Was it 96? 
96, Six, man. Yep, that's what I was going to say. I know, which is crazy because I'm, I'm only 29. So yeah, I know, right? It, I made that like at <laughs> nine, nine years old or maybe that'd be five. I can't do that. I can't do the math that fast. You're yeah. a prodigy. Young. I was young. Prodigy. No, man, this is this is still a really solid album, and uh, so I'll just I'll just get right into it. I, uh, you know, I I want to hear how you got into music and in the industry and all that stuff. I'd love to hear that story, but I, you know, I grew up in a pretty conservative Christian uh, home, and you know, it was like it was like to listen to like Michael W. Smith and Twilight Paris <laughs> was like a big deal, right? And yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> jars of clay. Uh, actually, that's the first thing my wife said to me when we met. She said, "Nice dress of clay shirt." Uh, oh, yeah, yes. that's how it started. <laughs> uh, we were sixteen, uh, but uh, man, this is good. Sorry, I just love this song. Um, so let me go ahead and stop that. Um, so it's you know it's like about that time you guys dropped this. Do you remember? You guys remember like the Joy? You might be too young for this, uh, but you remember how like they had those like CD clubs where you like. Oh, yeah. You could get like ten CDs for buying one or whatever, you know. So yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, so that's where I was getting all like my Michael W. Smith and stuff like that. And then I think that's where I got your. I think that's where I got that album. And I was like, oh, what is this? It's in rock and roll, you know. <laughs> and at that time, you know, I'm like listening to like uh, Stone Temple Pilots and Bush and stuff like that. And I can remember because I wasn't really allowed to listen to that stuff. I can remember literally like my mom and dad had like this big stereo with a record player and tape decks and all that and i would record my friend's cds onto tape but like turn the volume all the way down and my parents would be like sitting right next to it and they didn't know i was recording it uh <laughs> anyway so like i heard this album and i was like what <clears throat> i remember it like like literally like it changed it changed my life in some ways because like i love christian metal i'm rocking august burns red today but like i i this was like i always tell people like this album was like my gateway yeah into like good christian music because <laughs> like, you were allowed to listen yes. to it and you yeah. wanted to listen to yeah it. so it like opened my mind like oh my goodness there's actually like good music and uh you know so then i got into started getting into like mxpx and supertones and tooth and nail and and then it was all <laughs> downhill from there in the hardcore and metal and all that stuff but mm -hmm. um so thank you Thank you, John. Good. I'm for glad this album. Like be, uh, <laughs> we were the, the gateway gateway drug for, for right. where you where you went. But the, you know, the truth is, there was a lot of great uh, Christian underground music, yeah. alternative metal, hardcore. You know, Six Feet Deep and Mortal and all those great bands. Yeah. Um, and even in the uh, you know when I was growing up was more in the, in, the, in the metal era. Sure. Uh, before a lot of the the hardcore, like Tooth and Nail, was more yeah. like hardcore and punk but um there was a bunch of amazing christian metal bands they just didn't really have the, the outlets that's right uh, yeah i always want to tell people you got to remember where you came from and and i know skillet wouldn't be here had it not been for white cross and yeah. of course striper and resurrection band and but but a whole ton of amazing christian metal and i i i was uh Similar story to you in terms of I, I wasn't allowed to listen to rock music, but you know uh, that's a very long story. But I ended up getting into Christian music, and it uh, God really used Christian music to change my life in a lot of ways to teach me a, a lot about the Bible. Mm. And so it was always a part of my vision was to I want to share Christ through music because music changes people, and and it very much I, people are identified by the music they listen to very much in the world. You oh, know? absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, so you know, you go into a lunchroom cafeteria, and you kind of know uh, that there's the people that listen to rock, there's the people that listen to R and B, hip hop, and and it so identify it identifies people that I thought I could share Christ through that music in the way that that other bands have done for me, mm. and it'd be a great way, uh, you know, to share the gospel. That was yeah. that's what it was all about for me. Man, I appreciate that so much, and that that brings up. Uh, well, two questions I want to ask. Uh, I don't know if you've ever listened to the labeled podcast. I always tell people that like music to listen to that podcast. It's like the history of Tooth oh. and Nail Records and stuff. It's amazing. I, I love it because there's just so many things like that I people that I know and bands I used to listen to and all that. And uh, but one question, um, they always ask you know certain questions and stuff. I I'm I would love to hear like, um, you know, I don't know if was that that was a self title album, right? Correct. Yeah. So was that was that your guys' first release, or did you have like um, some you know self releases you did before that, or like what uh, was it? What was it like? You just like all at once, you were like like in the midst of it, huh? 
Yeah, you know, we we had been playing in different bands for a long time at that point. I, I began playing, singing my first band when I was 15, you know, and didn't, I mean, I loved music. I didn't know how se- serious I would take it. I mean, I took it very seriously, but I didn't know if it would ever be a job. Yeah. It was just like, I'm going to do it while I can. And, you know, I was in college and uh, not doing very <laughs> well at all in college. But the truth is I didn't do very many things very well besides music. And sure. it was a dream of mine. But um, when Skillet got together, um, that w- it was just all very quick. Skillet was a side project of several different bands oh, in it. my church. And my pastor was very influential in my life. Said, "Hey, John, I think you would be good with this other guitar player from this other band in church. Why don't you guys start a side project, write a couple of songs, see how it goes?" And he said, "It'd be like cooking, taking all these ingredients out of different bands uh. and throwing it in a big skillet. That'd be fun." I was like, "Yeah, sure." So it wasn't that serious, but very, very quickly. I mean, like three months, we were recording that first album. It was very fast. Wow. So we just had that sense. It was a sense of, all right, God, it, this is something God is doing. It was it was put together so quickly and so crazily. We had a sense that this is what the Lord is doing, and, and we're going to go down the path. I dropped out of school. I was failing out anyway. But um, <laughs> I was like, we'll do this for a couple of years, and uh, then I'll do some, whatever is next. And I never dreamt it would last for 20 years. So it's kind of an amazing ride. Yeah, that's amazing. 20 years, wow. I just turned I just turned forty on Saturday, so I'm feeling old already. That really made me feel old. So um, yeah, but uh, so here's the other question, and uh, I I think this is a great. I love this this discussion. We've had this before on, on this show. Uh, enjoy if you want chime in on this. But so I can remember going to. I mean, my wife needs to go to shows like every week, and. I can remember going to see bands like Zayo and stuff like that, and yeah. and like. You know, I'd be, I'd like be like indignant, like if if these were Christian bands and they weren't up there like talking about Jesus and, you know, taking the opportunity to preach the gospel and like I'd be so mad and then I'd see them drinking a beer after the show and I'd be like, ah oh, man, what's with those guys, you know? And uh, and I've <laughs> I've changed my perspective now uh, in some in some ways, like you know, I think what's important is that we. Um, that even if you're Christians in a band or whatever, however you want to word it, you know, like you're, you're glorifying God and, and, you know, if you have an opportunity to, to represent Christ and share the gospel, I think you should, but, um, sure. you know, I've, but I, but that's why I appreciate about you though, because you said it earlier, like you were like, Hey, this is a good opportunity for me <laughs> to share Jesus. And, uh, sure. so I love that. So I just love, I'd love to hear your take on that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's a few things. And before I jump in, just as an FYI, I cannot hear Joy. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed oh, really? to, but I can't. Um, but um, so you have to tell me hmm. anything that, that okay. she wants to know. But in terms <laughs> of the conversation, I think that, that I know exactly what you mean. I would like to share my own opinion about it. I'm going to nuance it out a lot. I ran a, a Christian club, if you want to call it yeah. that, um, you know, like in my church. I was in, I was in college. My pastor had started this like Christian club, all the Christian bands, all the tooth and nail bands would come in. Yeah. And, and we were passionate about discipleship um, and sharing the gospel, um, giving people a chance to come to Christ and, and all this. One of the things that was very difficult for me that I noticed very quickly was that most of the, Christ- the Christian bands that came through, I became less and less convinced they were saved. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that they were even a little bit saved, right. which that I'm, I'm saying that as a joke. That's bad theology. You're not a little bit saved. My point is, I'm like, are you even pretending to be saved? Right. Most of them weren't even pretending to be saved. They just were on Christian labels. Yep. And I, I got very kind of um, down about that. Sure. It started from a place of when I was like, guys, are you ever going to talk about Jesus on the stage? Why are you in a band if you never talk about Jesus? And then it became, I, I started realizing, oh, they have nothing to share because they are not recreated by the Spirit. That That's very clear to me. And so their lives didn't look like it. And they would, yeah. they would be drinking and smoking and hanging out with, uh, you know, girls and stuff. That, that was cl- You had that, all of your discernment m- meters were pinging out. You know, I'm like, sure. this doesn't smell right at all. That was really difficult for me. And so um, throughout the years... I certainly have, I think that there's a lot of room to move here, but I think that you nailed it when you said something to the effect of, I don't remember how you said it, but if you belong to Christ, then all of you belongs to Christ. It's not like just 
when I pray, just when I go to church, just with my family, it, it's all encompassing. Like the, all the great uh, Puritans taught us, it, the, the goal is to make all of life holy, yep. all, everything in your life submitted to the Lord uh, Jesus. So I found in, that, in my life that there were times when I felt that I should not preach from the stage, mm. but it was never from a position of, I'm going to leave Jesus out of this. Right. Uh, and, and, and even in those moments, uh, in, in those, I would say, I shouldn't say moments, tours, I went on some tours when I just knew I'm the opening act. It's not my place to do so. That, mm. that would get me either kicked off a tour or just not what people came for. But I still know that, that my, I'm going to get a little bit mystical here, but I think yeah. we have a lot of scripture to back it up. I'm going to believe that my presence as a, uh, a follower of Jesus, that, that I, my life is so different than my surroundings that just by being on this tour, that we are being salt and light, uh, whether yeah. I talk about Jesus on stage or not, the purity of the band, namely the sexual purity of the band, because obviously sex, drugs, rock and roll, you go on secular tours, it's sex everywhere. It's, it's, it's party everywhere. Our, the fact alone that we are on stage, not cussing to the crowd, not mm-hmm. asking um, people to take their clothes off from the crowd, which is what you typically see at these <laughs> metal shows. It was the fact that we were there alone. I felt like we didn't need to say anything. The gospel in a certain way was going forth from the fact that we were living pure lives. And yeah. I've got a bunch of really crazy to me, miraculous stories that we got uh, messages from people when I thought, whoa, that was crazy. I can't believe that God used this thing to bring someone to Christ. So that's kind of my feeling. I don't like I don't like the idea that you can be saved and be ashamed of the gospel. Sure. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, by the way, is that new ink on your hand? Uh, no, it's not. Oh, it looks fresh. Oh, no. That, was that a rose? It looks fresh. I just saw it, it in the video. So I, I have a rose here, if you can see it. And, and under the rose, it says, Fear God. Oh, nice. And, and then on this side, I've got a line. It's hard to see. And under it, it says, Love God. And right there. And so the idea was that, obviously, we are holding these. Say, it, my rose says, Fear God, because he is gentle, but he is the warrior king, mm-hmm. right? He yep. will have his way. He will, he, he will have all... He will have everything under his feet. But the other side is that, yes, he is the warrior king, but his love is so infinite. So those are the two things on my uh, right on. On, on my thing. And then on my fingers here, it says fire and fury. And this is not about fighting. Some people thought this may be because I was a, a fighter. I'm not a fighter. But <laughs> this is the fire of the Holy Spirit mm. that gives you a fury against the flesh. Nice. Love Come it. on, baby. Love it's it. from the Bible. Love it. I basically. love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So that's you know it's interesting. I, I'm so glad you brought some of that stuff up because like even where I'm at now in my life and listening to that labeled podcast and listening about tooth and nail like like coming up when when that stuff was breaking you know everyone I, everyone just assumed it was like a Christian label and all those bands were Christians mm-hmm. you know which now I realize it really wasn't supposed to be a Christian band but you know he had bands in there that just had good messages and a lot of them were Christians but. Um, you know, so we would see those bands, you know, and we just assume they were Christians and, you know, we right. were way off, you know, you've been to Cornerstone, I'm assuming, right? I have. Yep. Yeah. I, I did. I did that <laughs> twice, you know, and we'd be going up to like some of our favorite bands like, Hey bro, you want to have a Bible study? And they're like, no. And we're like, what's with that guy? You know, like, uh, <laughs> You know, but 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 <laughs> What's this with that guy, he's born of the flesh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So a lot of those, ba- you know, a lot of those bands, like guys, were never even really Christians. They just hung out maybe with guys that were Christians, or like went to youth group for a minute, went got into this band, and then you know, just kind of people assumed they were Christians. Um, you know, so like there's that type. You know, so when they like don't act like a Christian, or they you know, apparently like fall away and stuff, you're like, oh, that's a bummer. You know, but then that brings me like to like the next conversation I want to have. And, you know, there's been even just the last five years, there's been so many uh, guys and band, like big bands, like major bands that uh, you, you know, claim to be Christian. So these aren't guys that like never really wanted to be Christians. These are guys that like claim to be Christians and have apostatized and like, you know, denied Christ. And it's like, man, that's like a gut punch when you see that. Yeah, I remember that happened with Under Oath. Under Oath was like one of my favorite bands that happened with, was a Hawk Nelson, like, you know, bands like that. And uh, you're like, man, what is what is happening? I know you've, 
I believe you've actually, you know, done some interviews maybe and, and spoken out against some of that. So I'd love to hear just your take on that and your thoughts on that. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, th- I think that, that that had always been hard for me ever since, again, 1995 when I was running that club, having those bands come through. And um, I, I was just like, I, I don't understand why we would act like, why, why we're doing Christian music if we are not actually given to lordship. It just didn't make sense to me. And I do think that throughout the years, I found that more and more disheartening. And uh, I, I never really became cyn- cynical about the church, but I certainly became cynical about Christian music. Mm. And, and because I'm just like, this is just, this is just kind of, so depressing. I mean, I just think it's the only way to say it. Like what? So we don't agree on, we don't agree on what we have to agree on. You know what I mean? And so that, that kind of became a a downer for me and just noticing on the road, I would, I was so naive. I thought we'd go on the road. We'd meet all these other Christian bands and we talk about Christ and discipleship and purity. And the next thing I know, I find out that the people I'm touring with don't want any of that. And in fact, what they actually want is sexual impurity. And so I would talk to them. I'd be like, hey, what's going on with this, you know, so-and-so? I'd bring something up in their life that was like clearly obvious. And they would just be like, dude, it's not your place to judge me and and this and the other. And I just just got very, very cynical about the Christian market in general. And um, I think that, yes, the last five years— I think we have just is become the pinnacle of reaping what has been happening in, in really in the gray in Christendom in general. The fact that yeah. we're not really teaching um, orthodox theology, we're not teaching uh, sanctification as we ought, holiness, and um, we're not really holding people account uh, to, uh, a lot of the times because we want to be nice. And obviously, being nice is really good and stuff. But when people are in positions of leadership, there's qualifications that should go with that. And so, I think a lot of it's just a lack of theology. And so, so I'm yeah. very passionate about about holding up a standard for for Christian leaders. And I I view Christian music sort of like that. I don't think Christian musicians have to have a theology degree. And I think it's okay if they. I say okay. I don't hold them. I know I've written songs that I could, if I could go back and say, I wish I could change that lyric because it's not theologically all uh, that great. Yeah. Yeah, I would do that. Sure. But I don't I don't think I would hold Christian musicians up to um, the way that when I read a Timothy Keller thing and I go, well, that doesn't sound right at all. I don't think I should hold <laughs> a, a, a Christian musician up to the same standard because they're, they're different jobs. But I still think that we should be in it for the same thing, which is to make Christ king of the whole world. Uh, well, Christ is king of the whole world, but to make his make him more famous in the world. Yeah. And a part of that fame is the lordship that he calls us to and sanctification. So I'm quite passionate Amen. about that. Amen. Right. Yeah. So can you hear Joy, by the way? Now? Yeah, I think I pa- can hear Joy now. She okay. sounds familiar from. Uh, Theolo- hey, hey, you know, that's me. Yeah, that's, that's Luke. There, that's your metal coming out. Uh, I went to someone else had done an intro for them, and I was like, I can be better than that. So I went in my garage one day and did like four takes, and I was like, here, pick one of these. And that's what they picked. Well, I think you did a good job. Thank a- you. And it's 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 even it's well, it's even got more theologically uh, accurate lyrics, even though it says nothing, than most of those tooth and nail bands you like. Right. <laughs> oh dang! Ooh, hey, I know it. I know it. I'm not well, there for the theology, I'll say that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate because some well, I know um Luke's not the biggest fan of Me Without You, but I ha I love and have loved Me Without You. And yeah, I don't I know I've seen that cut that decline that we're all talking about where like one time after a concert I had the opportunity to see and chat with uh, the lead singer a little bit and he said very good theological things that were all solid yeah and now you know like you said you see that decline and it's not so much um i mean when you're in a like a i guess a position where people are looking up to you you are uh, more responsible in a way it's not like you're a pastor or anything like you were saying sure. but the the musician is responsible for his mm discipleship fellowship making sure that he's doing the things that he's commanded to do and i wonder if just like how 
like with the lifestyle of traveling and like you said even maybe for a lot of these guys there was just a lot of temptation like so much temptation that it exposed that they weren't really Mm. saved Mm. um but it's got to be it's it's got to have its challenges so i guess what are some of the challenges and what would you say maybe um one of the greatest illusions of musical fame would be like something that people think they really want but maybe they don't (laughs) want that much (laughs) when they have it (laughs) uh sin yeah all sin yeah (laughs) um you know, I would probably say a few things. You know, one of the things that I really love about James White, I've heard him say a couple of times on his podcast, is um, he, he he's made. Cause, you know, people always ask him if I want to get into apologetics. You know, what what advice can you give me? And I've heard him say several times that you should be a part uh, of a local church. In other words, you're not just an itinerant guy that goes around without being surrounded um, by by church leaders and within the context of the ministry of the church. I've always viewed that same thing with being in a Christian band. And I think that, honestly, I think that's our biggest, if, if I could tell anybody, do what I did, it would be, you know, there's lots of things you shouldn't do, but one of the things you should do is do what we did, be a part of a church. And that's not just the fact that we go to church when we're home. We have relationship mm-hmm. with my church leaders. And and when relationship comes um Church authority yep. uh, right. comes accountability. In a certain way, my church views Skillet as, as a ministry of sure. the church. They are sending us out, and so I think a lot of bands didn't have that. And um, I think that combined with you know, yes, there are a lot of temptations, but some of it is also. Um, I mean, I hate to keep going back to this, but I, I kind of know who listens to your program, so I probably can keep saying this over and over, <laughs> and they, they won't mind. Um, with a teach, teaching about like worldview and and yeah. you know if it, in other words you could look at it like this, you you have like your Pietism w- yeah. right which, which would be um, you know let's just let's don't get involved in what the world and culture and what they're doing we have our own culture so we're 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 outside of that right that is more like what I grew up in my parents were were not into like you know, Christians making art into the world kind yeah, of a thing. Sure. Yeah. But, you know, I very much believe in that. And I know not everybody does, but I like the idea because I, I see it in scripture that all of the earth belongs to God. And we are taking, in my view, kingdom culture to the world. So it is the kingdom of yeah. God that is overtaking the darkness. So I'm like, yeah, we should be doing that. But I don't think that a lot of the musicians they don't have any vision for any of that stuff. They just they just want to make cool music, you know? They yeah. want to make cool art and they don't understand how different the world's um how do you want to say it? They don't understand how different the world's agenda is from the from the Christian from mm. the Christian's agenda. I know that sounds really silly, but I I don't think that they understand that. I think they think it's almost like neutral ground. Right. Sure. You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Like like that's kind of like neutral out there and I'll just make cool Christian music into the neutral world of musicianship where we all want the same stuff and they haven't understood because they don't have a good theology. Yeah. Um, now that's not saying the, the person that you're talking about, Joy, I have no idea, but some of the right. people don't really understand. No, no. If you are not a friend of Christ, you are an enemy of Christ and, and your flesh is in rebellion towards all the things of the kingdom. That includes art you know what I mean? That includes the music you make. That includes the way you think that justice and law should be fill in the blank. So I do think a lot of that goes into it too. And and so these people go out into the world and they don't have a, a foundation, not only in truth, but in relationship with the church. And so they don't know that they are being influenced. They think they're on neutral ground, but they're not mm. because they're constantly they're they're constantly hearing the lies of the devil, the flesh, and enemies of God showing them all the things they are missing, and and what they are missing out on is just sin. But but they don't know it, and so one tiny, you you give an inch, and before you know it, you you can't even you can't even see your parents on the beach because you've drifted in wow. the ocean. You know, that's, that's how good. I see it. That's good, man. I love that, and and yeah, just along these this line of thought here. You know, that's one thing we've been big on at Apologia is just making art to the glory of God. And it doesn't have to – you don't have to have 
the name Jesus in every song, right? There doesn't have to be a full gospel presentation in every song. Sure. And that's what I, you know, I love about you you guys, like you just make good music that glorifies God, but it doesn't, you know, it's it's not it's not like force fed, you know, cuz then it mm. just gets cheesy and and it's just good music that glorifies God and like we should be making the best art. Period. Well, because well, I, we have Jesus and we want to honor him. Go ahead. I was mm. just going to say I think sometimes artists they they are Christian or they become a Christian somewhere along in their artistic journey and they almost find it hard to keep creating art without it like they didn't write yeah. worship songs before they weren't writing hymns before so they're like how do i keep <clears throat> like and i wasn't painting pictures of jesus before um you know right. so like <laughs> so what what does that look like for me and yeah it's i guess that's kind of that's it's hard for people to and it's not i mean i don't consider myself like a huge artist but it's a struggle that i feel like i've experienced to some extent even just feeling like um you're like well how do i am how does the sort of <laughs> unique style that god gives each of us to incorporate that yeah. like into art and it can be hard but it's just it's like a it's a discipline it's something that you'd have to you have to work at and try but i think some people just give up maybe or they they do what's contrary sure. to mm. to the yeah. word or um or they just stop making art maybe i don't know right yeah well you know um, if i could probably break off of theology and and just say something from a this is very subjective this is just my own analysis there was a joke um it sounds like you guys m might be old enough to remember sarah mclaughlin oh yeah yeah all right Sarah McLaughlin. Another example would be Stained, the the metal band Ugh. Stained. Um, those are two examples of artists who <laughs> who made incredible art, and as they got older, and probably wealthier and happier, their art their art what didn't stay as good. <laughs> right, <laughs> and that's what it is. There's like this association. <laughs> With good art and like um, depravity and suffering, there's this yes. connection there. But and so people are like, oh well, now I'm joy filled. So yes. how do I that's keep creating? What I was going to. That's kind of what the the line I'm going down. I'm 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 scared to make anybody think I'm saying something crazy, wrong theology. But just uh, stay with me because it's kind of what you said. Great art, subjectively. Okay, I'm not talking about art that glorifies God. I'm talking about from a world's perspective, great mm -hmm. art right. is something that shocks you, that gets you thinking, that mortifies you maybe. In other words, it may be actually disturbing to an incredible, uh, like satanic degree, but it could be right. quote unquote good art from a subjective point of view because it's provocative. And so what happens with art sometimes is that that's what makes it so good. When Sarah McLaughlin came out, it was such pretty music, but the lyrics were so deep and so dark. Mm. And she she's singing with the piano. It sounds like it could be something somebody sings in church, but then she would like drop an F bomb. And it was so shocking that it made people like, oh my gosh, did you hear that? That was so, uh, it, it's, it's like seeing something unnatural, right? You know what I mean? It's like Geiger's art, if, if you've ever seen the film Alien. You know, H.R. Oh, yeah. Geiger is the one that created Alien. He creates this really disturbing uh, alien imagery um, that's it's kind of human-esque, but it's distorted in a really uh, kind of demonic way, in, in my opinion. But it makes for great artwork, right? Right. Well, all of a sudden, you get saved, and what you like begins to change. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what you enjoy, what you think great art is begins to change because for the Christian, great art should bring glory to the creator. He's he's the Amen. God of my art now. And so all of a sudden, if you make, quote, uh, good art meaning, uh, art that glorifies Christ, well, there's a lot less people that love art that glorifies Christ than there are people that love art that just shocks them. And mm -hmm. so all of a sudden, you're holding these things and, and whatever. So if I could give any advice to those Christians who do get saved and they want to keep making art. I still believe that through the Holy Spirit, because God is creative and he's created us in his image. And I believe through the power of the spirit and the filling of the spirit that he, 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 uh, empowers us to make art 
that is truly beautiful and truly spreads his fame. I believe all those things, but I do think there are cases a friend of mine, I won't say his name because it's not my place to, but who plays in, in a rock band that is like every other word is the F word. And he got radically saved, but is trying to, to find a way to make it work. Hmm. And if I could give any encouragement in some of those people, sometimes it's an issue of, to me, of like lordship and like maybe your art is something that you just need to give up. Maybe that's just your old life, you know, because to you, great art is tied to the flesh. Yeah. And I don't think, no, you know, so you have people who are recreated, but are still trying to make songs that sound like they're not recreated right. it, and it, it doesn't work. So maybe you just got to give that up. And it, life is not about your art. Yeah. Life is about, right. you know, glorifying God. So maybe you got to give up your art for that. I don't know if that's helpful or not. That's yeah. just an opinion. No, amen. I appreciate that. Um, so I have a, a, a reader or a, a listener's question here. I'm going to read to you for a second. I thought you would find this funny though. Someone commented and said, that they have one of your CDs stuck in their CD player from the previous owner in their car. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's great. I mean, you tell me that's not the power of the spirit. I don't know what it is, okay? <laughs> so uh, that's hilarious. So here's the question. I don't know, and I'm not sure even if you have a good answer for this or not, but I can maybe kind of reword it. I, I guarantee I do. Okay, perfect. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so I know, because I mean, I know you and you and James are like BFFs now because he's always sending us, look what John <laughs> sent me all the time. Like, um, and I know you've been on a bit of a spiritual journey yourself the last, uh, I don't know how many years, two or three years or whatever, um, or theological, I should say, not spiritual, theological journey. Um, and so the question was kind of like, and maybe just give your thoughts on this. The question is basically like, why is the reformed community basically like given up on music? It's, you know, they've basically given it to Bethel and Hillsong and all this like weak theology stuff. Um, you know, and, and actually I will say there's been, I have, I do feel like there's been an uptick in the last couple of years from some good solid reformed music, especially when it comes to worship and stuff, which I've been encouraged to see. Um, so I don't know if you have an answer to that or what your thoughts are on that. Um, you know, why uh, is the reform community? Well, I promise you I would have an answer, but I, but I probably don't, but I would say this, that, um, and this is not in any way, uh, to tell you the truth, I don't know that much about the quote reform sure. community, even though I am learning a lot more about who, what, what groups of people belong. So this is not, certainly not a slam on the reform community. And this is also not a slam on the Bethel community. I have lots of friends who love Bethel's music, Hillsong's music and, yeah. or certain song, let's say certain, certain sure. ones are like, I don't know if I love that, but there are some good stuff there. And I think that that's what gets really, that's what gets really difficult. I will say, um, that I do think that reformed people tend to be very, uh, um, let's see, what's the word? They're very uh, nitpicky about theology. <laughs> that's, that's fair, right? That's a good, yeah. that's a good way mm -hmm. to put it. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And very, very like, hey, wait a minute, you know, do not dishonor God. I personally think it's one of the best things about reformed theology. Um, but can there be a, a tendency sometimes when, when maybe you, you got, I think, I personally think James is quite good at this. I think James is pretty good at going, that might not be the best way to say it, but I think I know what they're saying. And, sure. and I always find James to be that way with me because I'm, I'm a rock star, I'm not a theologian. And sometimes he's like, I think I, if I remember the way James said it to me about my, my book, I have a chapter on the, the Trinity and he says, I really liked it. I think he said something like some of your, uh, some of your language on the Trinity is a little rough, but so is your singing voice. <laughs> but, you oh, know, I, love I, think, it. I think that's fair. I think we can be people who love truth, sure. but also be gracious and generous that maybe it's not always being said in the exact right way. And, but then when we do need to draw a sword and say, you know, we will not sing that song, yeah. I think that's okay too, you know? So I do think that that Bethel and, and Hillsong because of their theology, they are given to, uh, um, I don't know if I'm getting on my, you know, obviously they're given to the, the things of the spirit or whatever you want to call that, sure. you know, the charismatic movement. And so there is a lot of, um, uh, of emotion that goes into that. And I personally think they're quite good at making emotional music. I oh, think yeah. they're very good at that. 
And some of the songs, especially some of the early Hill songs, like Shout to the Lord. Oh, yeah. I mean, I oh, think man. it's one of the best worship songs um, ever written in the yeah. last, you know, 100 years. So um, I don't know if that helps or not, but, you know, I... I I personally think it's great to tap into my emotions when sure. I'm writing music. Yeah. I mean, why not? Let's get, and I love to get emotional about God too. I wrote in my book that it's not wrong to get emotional about Jesus. The, what's problem is when your faith in Jesus is based yes, on that emotion. Exactly right. But I love to get emotional about a God who saved me from exactly. sin and death and hell. And even though I keep continuing <laughs> To, to say no to lordship in so many areas of my life and sanctification, he keeps dumping grace on me Amen. day after day. I get very emotional about that God. So, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe we tie them together. The great theology and the emotion. Maybe we bring it all together and we write amazing hymns. That'd be good. Yeah. Right. Well, and it's obviously important to... Uh, um. You want to be, like you said, you want to be discerning about the kinds of music that you listen to, but especially songs that are included like in your corporate worship service. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's, you know, that's a, that's a big thing. And there's nothing wrong with uh, being nitpicky to an extent. But if you nitpick Hillsong more than your own sin, maybe yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> need to change your perspective slightly. Right. Well, I think it's a great point, I, what you just said. I, I do think that there's, for me personally, just my opinion, I, I do find it different to me what I listen to at home and what I want to sing in corporate worship Absolutely. to God. I'm Absolutely. corporate worship, like, hey, let's sing things that are right about his character and let's right. sing songs about him. Right. Um, and, and then, you know, I think when we're talking about things we listen to at home and things that are poetic and whatnot— I personally have a bit more grace when it comes to that stuff, no, which I think is kind of what Joy just said. Yeah, right? that's a great point. I appreciate that. So you have four minutes here. I know you got to go. So quickly, what's it been like for you this last year? I know you've I've seen several interviews with you, especially on like Christian TV and stuff like that, where you've been very bold and outspoken. Uh, and I've I've loved the responses from the people you know interviewing. They're kind of like don't know what to say. Um, so what's it been like for you? Has it been, has it been a struggle in the industry you're in? Have you had a lot of pushback? Um, or, you know, yeah, what's that been I know like? What you mean. It's been an interesting ride and, and I don't want to give you too much information, but oh man, to tell you the truth, I've always felt on the outskirts of Christian music anyway. I okay. mean, I remember, I remember one time getting in a lot of trouble at a Christian music festival because I was on a panel and someone had asked me about something. I didn't know what I was about to say was going to make people so mad. Wow. But what I said was basically, I was like, I was like, Hey, um, they were talking about Jesus coming back and saving us from the world. And I said, Oh, well, I mean, I don't actually believe in the rapture. And, and I had no idea. <laughs> I had no earthly idea. I mean, I, I wasn't, I had gone through college. I was reading, John Calvin. And I didn't know that, that. I mean, I knew that a lot of people believed it, but I didn't know it was going to like draw a sword. Yeah. I had calls from the label and what, but the amazing thing was, is there were people at the music festival, Christian musicians who aren't even saved and were saying ap actually crazy stuff from stage that wow. I'm like, that's not exactly actually like there were people that said stuff that gave you the impression that, that, you know, maybe Jesus doesn't mind a little bit of sexual impurity in your life, you know, wow. think crazy things. And I was like, no, no, I know. I believe Jesus is coming. I believe Jesus is coming back. I, I just don't believe that we're leaving the earth. You know, I didn't know that it was going to cause a big thing. Yeah. And so I've always been on the outskirts of that in a certain way. And now the interesting thing is, is there is a group in Christian music that is, is not, there's, there's many groups. It's just like what's happening in politics. Now there's a group in Christian music that is hyper woke and that is really big time on the like the critical race theory, multi-ethnic church side and 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 very kind of progressive politically. Mm -hmm. And I would consider to be quite half progressive theologically. Mm -hmm. Then you have your your other people that are like, "Oh, let's just be friends." But then there's this other group that is starting that is like, "You know what? Our the fact that we haven't drawn a sword over theological issues over the last two decades has led us to a place that is really dire. And yeah. we are actually becoming, we're, we're accountable for what we've done. And, and 
you know, I certainly am in that group as well, you know, and, and maybe I'm championing that, that maybe I'm championing that banner of we have a job to do. And yes, it may cost us sales and it may cost us streams mm. and it may get us canceled and it may make people mad, but we're actually at a place that if we don't get clear about what the gospel is, then there's going to be no more gospel to yeah. preach anyway. And Amen. so I think there's a group of people rising up like that. And I certainly am in that, that group. Awesome. Thank you so much, brother. I know you got to go. Where can uh, people find you and your stuff? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, first thing, I have, I have a podcast called Cooper Stuff Podcast. Come check it out, everybody. And you can get that on YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. Cooper Stuff. I have a book. Uh, you can get the book only at my website, johnlcooper.com slash awake. And then where can they find your music? Pretty much anywhere. Anywhere. Skillet. Go listen to it today on Spotify, iTunes, whatever. Newest album is called Victorious. Tell me that's not a great name for this time because everybody's scared and everybody thinks that the world is going to hell in a handbasket, but the gospel is always going to be victorious. It is Im- it is impossible to shake the kingdom of God. So that's what the Amen. album's about. That sounds really post-mill, and it sounds like you're getting called for your next interview. <laughs> I am. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> no, you're good, man. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. We'll love to have you on again sometime. Thank you. Thank you. Love you yeah. guys. All right. Peace. God bless, man. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. Yeah. He's a cool guy. Oh, yeah. Man, we didn't even really get into like the other stuff. Oh, well, that's okay. That was fun. You had other stuff? Well, I mean, we were going to possibly talk oh, about yeah, okay. Mission of God by Joe Boot, which yeah. is my favorite theological book. Maybe we can have him on again yeah. to talk about. He's been reading this. That's why we were possibly talking about it. I didn't even ask him about Darren. Our friend Darren Doan, I found out, did one of his music videos, and so I was going to ask him about that. But um, yeah, so that's that's exciting. Um Someone else asked a question here. Where would I go? Uh, what does it mean when the Bible says have nothing to do with false teachers? I didn't leave a church because of Hillsong Bethel. Am I being legalistic? No. <laughs> no, you're not. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what's been hard, you know, about, especially with those two groups specifically. Um, you Joy knows when we first started the church, like all we did was we didn't have like – enough people we didn't have a band yeah or even someone to like lead worship so we were watching <laughs> hillsong and right and bethel music videos that was our worship and you know it was good it was good for the crowd we had at the time you know but then bethel especially started yeah. just falling off the map with theologically and we had to to ex nay any bethel stuff and even hillsong now you know they're depending who you talk to i know right uh, you know they're 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 at least at least at the minimum towing the line of Full on right. heresy, you know, if they haven't, and so well, and that can be enough of a reason to just that. Well, that is enough of a reason um, yeah. to just avoid someone overall. Um, like John was saying, I don't think there's any harm generally in um, judging a song based off of its content, right? Um, but there are there are plenty of times when you can just say um, that music is coming from a heretic. So I'm not going to I'm not going to necessarily waste my time like measuring yeah. all the measuring the content of their stuff. I'm just not going yeah. to. There's nothing wrong with that. And we should be discerning. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And I know like this is I've heard even Pastor James talk about this in Divine Line in years past. Like so, so many, so many Christians I know growing up with listen to like Phillips, Craig and Dean. Right. And they're like not even trinitarian right you know but yeah. like their music's they, yeah. but but then you're like in this dilemma you're like well but their music is good and it honors christ right but they're not christians like they don't believe in the trinity so right. like, how do you balance that well and like i mean you like john was even saying uh sometimes that represents like where they're at in their discipleship mm-hmm. too so if you yeah. hear something questionable in a song that was written in 1985 it's possible that the person who wrote that feels differently yeah, about it now right exactly <laughs> and i even and like you know what i'm about to say i realize some people probably will like be really upset about you know sorry but you know like there's there's still you know like i, I appreciate what john said like there's a difference between what we're doing in corporate worship you know and songs you listen to at home like i think there's there is a line there of, of importance um, now that doesn't mean like you can go home and listen to bad theology songs, you right. know, and stuff like that. But, um, 
you know, there's, I'll be honest, there's like, there's, there's some songs from Hillsong, you know, that I, there are still like, at certain times I'm feeling a certain way, like I need to listen to that song and it's encouraging. Well, and, and it, we both know. listen to secular yeah. music even. Right. <gasps> oh my goodness. <gasps> um, so obviously there, I, we also believe that there's freedom to enjoy yeah. art that isn't, uh, I mean, well, well, I think, so let me just put it this way. I think there are, I think we have quite enough Christian art critics and not enough Christian artists. Right. <laughs> and I do think that it's, um, this is something that disciplines are something I've been thinking about um, in my own personal life. Mm. And I think it is much easier to be an art critic than to be an artist and mm. uh, making art, making me learning an instrument, learning how to paint, um, securing a subject and executing art is a discipline. It is not, uh, you don't do nothing and it happens. Um, and so I think that Christians need to start focusing on um, worthwhile disciplines and not necessarily taking the easy route all the time. Because yeah. it's very easy to commentate, uh, which I say as I sit here commentating. <laughs> um, so let me just tell you how easy it can be. Yeah, it's um, really easy. <laughs> but yeah, my point is just I would I do not give bethel or hillsong the green light yeah uh personally um but i yeah that's my statement is less art critics and more artists Hmm. amen to that both are good both are good but i just see a lot of critics yeah and and not enough people people that just want to naysay and they're not actually interested in contributing anything valuable other than their own opinion which it's fine sometimes, yeah. But the world is not just opinions. The world can be real things, yeah. real made, created things. Yeah, absolutely. Amen to that. All right. Well, I'm gonna switch. I'm just reading some of these comments that are making me laugh. Um, oh, okay. I'm gonna. My computer died. So. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um. That's just how it goes. My computer is kind of old, so yeah. the battery lasts. Like when I unplug it, it's like, you have 26 minutes. <laughs> From now, <laughs> you're at a hundred percent battery. I know that, yeah. but you've got it happens. Got twenty six minutes. It happens. Um, so I'll switch gears here for a second, and then we'll wrap the show up. But uh, if you guys happen to see earlier this week, we did a live stream uh, about the abortion bill we're doing here. Well, I keep saying we, but that Walt, Walt Blackman has has um, uh, put put forth here in mm-hmm. Arizona. I say I keep saying we because we've been help, helping and working with him, but um, uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of things because I know people have been asking and I want to get the word out. So basically, we uh, uh, Walt put up, dropped two bills here. The last, well, the first one was on the twenty second of January. We've talked about um, which you can go to uh, hb twenty six fifty dot com to see the status of that. You can sign the petition. You don't have to live here in Arizona for that. So if you get a chance to go to that please please sign the petition help us out with that um so basically that bill right now is just kind of sitting in limbo and uh um the the speaker um of the house here in arizona seems uh rusty bowers uh he he's sitting on it and he has the ability to put it into committee and he hasn't and rusty's a very sweet man i've met him he says he's pro-life so we've been encouraging him to, hey, hey, Rusty, let's get this bill to committee, you know, so that it can get read and get voted on. Because if it's not, I think tomorrow's the deadline, and it's technically dead after tomorrow if it's not if it's not read. So, uh, it, you know, he has the opportunity to uh, to um, to get that bill moving forward. And also with uh, a man named Frank Pratt, who is also able to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Frank Pratt is is for the second bill I forgot to mention. So the second bill is, uh, oh no, I forgot the number. I, HB uh, twenty eight seventy seven. So the second bill that Walt dropped was uh, essentially saying that the as as the state of Arizona, we're going to defy Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade was a court decision; it wasn't law. Uh, H or thirteen dash three six zero three is the current bill on the books in Arizona. Has been since the seventies. It criminalizes abortion, makes it illegal. So the second bill essentially says you need to enforce this bill, ignore Roe, 
and enforce this bill that's already on the books. Right. And so that one is being held up then by Frank Pratt. Um, and so we we did a live feed live stream this week on what day was that? Tuesday. Uh, to uh, we were out in, in Rusty's uh, neighborhood, just with signs and just encourage him to do the right thing. So, anyways, you can contact Rusty Bowers at r Bowers at a z l e g dot go. So that's r Bowers at a z ledge. I hate ledge 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 dot gov. And you can call his office at 602-926-3128. And he's in room 223 here in the house in Arizona. And for the other bill as well, you can also contact, reach out to Frank Pratt. His email is fpratt at azledge.gov. So that's F-P-R-A-T-T at azleg.gov. And his office number is 602-926-5761. That's room 113. So if you guys are listening and you want to help here in Arizona end abortion, we can criminalize it immediately. Please reach out to these gentlemen and encourage them to do the right thing to, to be courageous. Yeah, and support can abortion. be a huge support can be a huge motivator for oh, yeah. politicians. Yes, absolutely. Just knowing that they have people that are saying, Yeah, yeah please do yes, this. They need they need <laughs> to feel some pressure, yeah. Right. So uh yeah i think that about wraps up the show like i said uh pastor jeff is on a sabbatical and he won't be here next week either so we will uh we're scheduled to have darren Doan on to talk about i don't know if the camera's on so if you hate when it's just luke and i and we talk about music i saw a few people that in the comments that were like "Mm, i don't like this well you just don't have to listen okay but we're just warning them darren's gonna be on we're gonna have a great time that's right if you want to stay home and have a horrible time that's fine (laughs) so we will be talking about free speech apocalypse if that camera's on over there you can see the poster uh i have darren and actually we have some we will have an exciting announcement about that um it's been getting a lot of a lot of play lately so right it um well it pretty much it's a topic that doesn't really go out of style right now right unfortunately yeah Yeah. one day i hope someone looks at the poster and is like what's that yeah yeah (laughs) maybe (laughs) some of our great great grandkids or something like that maybe sooner who knows maybe yeah that'd be awesome so anyways we'll hopefully have him on as the plan next week and we'll talk about that and make an exciting announcement so as always, thank you everyone for your support. You can go to apologiastudios.com and sign up for all access. Oh, I should mention that our our website is we're rebuilding it mm-hmm. and the rebuild is almost complete and then we can yep. start migrating all the content over to the new site and it's going to be even more awesome and better. Yep. So we're looking for that. I know as well if we've been talking about uh bonson you and uh there's that's being it's built another as well. ongoing project yeah lord willing within the next month we should start having some content going up on there so we'll be looking for that but you can go to apologiastudios.com to sign up for all access you keep the lights on we mean that we thank you for partnering with us of course you can also go to endabortionnow.com to get involved in our fight to end abortion uh not just here in the u.s but in six other countries as well and we've been helping a lot in northern ireland right now and those brothers are amazing and i love them and i'm encouraged by them um and yeah so apology at church.com as well you can go check out stuff there and obviously youtube and facebook and all that good stuff so thank you everyone for your support uh i'm gonna get this next song here pulled up thank you joy as well is it gonna be a skillet song it is (laughs) how did they know i know right well, you only get two, I guess, in and out. Yeah. So. I, this is a great album. Yeah. Sometimes the, the older stuff's the best stuff. He's definitely, they've changed. They've had a little bit of a, a lot of bit of a change in music over the years. Yeah. They've kind of ebbed and flowed with stuff. Yeah. But they definitely don't sound like this anymore, but right. I love this album. This is like the nostalgic stuff. Brings me back memories yeah. to high school. Mm-hmm. Not old. quite high school for me, but well... It's one of those things where um, you like think it's newer than it is. Yeah. It came out when you were really young, but you discover it when you're like a certain age. How old were you when you... Do you, you remember? This came out in 96. Yeah, I was going to say, well, in 96, I was seven years old. 
But then I probably discovered it like 11, 12, 13. Oh, okay. And of course I thought it was like this new great thing yeah. that it had been around for a while. And by then they were probably like in their, <laughs> they were like in some kind of like techno stage or something. They're like very electronic. Right, yes. So that's mm-hmm. probably about the time you discovered it. They were actually <laughs> past the sound so Right. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you again for John. He's awesome. You guys yep, can go check you. him out. Support him. He's really great. And uh, peace out, everyone. Yeah.